says she wants the ability of all women to be able to have a life that's great for them. What Michael tells you on our side of the house, which goes unresponded to, is that when you have lots of women flocking to these zones, which are principally going to be small areas within these countries, what happens to the rest of women outside of those zones who don't have those role models in their society to say, look, that oppression you're suffering is wrong, who don't have senior members of management who are women within those jobs to say this kind of oppression is wrong and we won't stand for it. What happens to those individuals who now are told, no, you can't get any job at all because there aren't enough women working there for you to be safe, for you not to be discriminated against? What happens about those women, the majority of these women uh, in these countries, and we get no response whatsoever? Firstly, let's clear something up, right? We hear at the very end of the speech this idea about Saudi Arabia and whites work very well. We're happy to acknowledge that in certain like unique cases, this might be a really great idea, right? They need to explain why it's a really good idea everywhere. Again, very little engagement with lots of the stuff Michael tells you on that particular Point. issue, right? We then get this red herring idea, which is at the moment, the problem is when you pay women money, that money goes to men. That exists on either side of the house, right? Even they're still gonna be members of families, they're still gonna have, if they live in oppressive households, even if they work, even if they work in women-only areas, do you think their oppressive husbands are going to allow them to continue to have like separate bank accounts and use that kind of stuff? No, it's not. It's completely non-comparative in this debate. We hear that it's good for women because at the moment, Point. if you don't have any cash, you don't have any choice. We say to a certain extent that's obviously true, but why is that choice reduced on, our, on their side of the house? First of all, Michael explains to you that the money that you'll receive in their zones is going to be, to be less than the money you'd receive on ours. Why does this happen? Two reasons. Firstly, the reason they give you. They tell you there's gonna be a huge amount of demand for these jobs. If there's a huge amount of demand for these jobs, that necessarily lowers the wages that are going to be paid for these jobs, right? The comparative on our side of the house is twofold. First of all, we say we can have affirmative action policies in these regions which says you have to give 30% of these jobs to these women and you have to pay them the same as men, right? That's really important. The second response is, on our side of the house, when women learn, men, uh, so men earn a particular wage, and women will be working in the same industries, and all the examples Michael tells you, just look at the rest of the world, right? If then women are being less, we can actually take that to court and say, look, we've got this senior manager who's being paid 50,000, he's a man, and this woman, he's being 30, paid 35,000, she, uh, she's a woman. That's wrong, that needs to stop. On their side of the house, when everyone is a woman getting paid, if they all get paid substantially lower, there's no way for them to say, look, this money is less. And second, what we say is it becomes harder for women outside of these zones to get promotion. I'm going to expand on that with Point my substantive, minute. right? So why does this reduce aspirations for women and girls in general, right? Firstly, what we say is you see far fewer women competing and succeeding with men and over men. Why is that? Necessarily, what their policy says is that the best thing for you to do as a woman is to go to these zones, right? And lots of people will go to these zones. We acknowledge that. But what does that mean? That means that you see lots of women who otherwise would have been competing and getting jobs over men not getting those jobs anymore, right? So you have fewer women in the rest of these zones, which, by the way, are obviously the majority of the country succeeding. Why is that so Point. important? We say even with affirmative action policies on our side of the house, why is the tokenism far less bad? Firstly, the way you get rid of discrimination often is to show that men and women are the same. So when you have a woman who gets a job through an affirmative action policy, policy and she's seen by her colleagues to actually be a really <coughs> good candidate and someone who works really well, that on a micro level shows men that women can actually work like right. them, are like the same as them. This then happens within all of these individual businesses within that country and leads to the macro change we're talking about. Because the general perception of women then changes because men have seen on an individual level that actually the women they work with and that their friends work with are actually capable. Moreover, what we say is that actually women who even get the first job through affirmative action then often go on to get promotions without affirmative action within that job. You harm that on their side of the house because far fewer people go to these kind of areas, right? The second thing is, is you increase the, and this is incredibly important because this shows that the number of women who apply for any job in general reduces, is you increase the idea amongst young boys, men, and women in general that women just can't compete with men at all, right? You say, look, you need your own separate zone to get jobs. That's how incapable you are of doing the job that the rest of us can do. You can't compete with us on 
any level, even affirmative action isn't enough for you. You can't actually be around us because you're that incompetent. These guys are going to claim effects. That's obviously not what we believe. That is the views that they're going to happen. If those aren't the views that are going to exist, then we don't need this policy at all because then there wouldn't be a problem, right? Why is that so important? We say that young girls in particular build an identity based on how other people view them, right? We say that at a young age, if boys are telling you, look, there are zones for you women, right? Don't be bothering applying for the jobs we're going to apply for. That's where you belong. You're one, more likely at best to apply for those areas. But two are far more likely just to believe you can't compete on any level with these jobs at all. So where do you see your comparative advantage? In the caregiving roles that they already believe that they are suited for. And that's what's more likely to happen. Secondly, what we tell you is that it harms your ability if you live in an oppressive household to get those jobs. Why is it? Because now patriarchal families realize that in the regular kind of jobs where at, at the moment there are some women working, that there are far fewer women working there because they now go to these particular areas, right? Why is that dangerous? That's dangerous because now men are often willing in these regions to let women go to work because they feel, okay, fine, there are other women there, you're not going to be ogled at, you're not going to be oppressed, there are other people who can help you there. If there are fewer women in those areas now to help you, the less likely that's going to happen. I'll take my call. Given that you erroneously contend that women are doing really well for the status quo and that wages will automatically be really low in these places, why is it that you also contend women will flock to them? How can this all be true? No, because the reasons that they're gonna like the women who the women you want to go there will go there is because you're telling them, look, we can give you jobs and these are jobs exist, right? At the moment we can tell them, look, there are other jobs in the rest of society which you can get, you undermine that message on your side of the house. Tash talks about masculinization. You get more masculinization on their side of the house because now there are fewer women who aren't masculinized in other areas saying, look, this is another option. You can be a business leader. She's right to say there aren't as many as we'd like. That trend is changing at the moment. You set that trend back when all the women who could have done that are now working in women-only areas. That means that when you are now growing up as one of the few women who works outside these areas, you don't actually see the other option. You see fewer women being in these roles. The question we need to ask ourselves at the end of this debate is not, is there a problem at the moment? There obviously is, and it's obviously awful. The question is, do you aspire women to believe that they can be the same as men? And do you tell the men who need to also believe that women are equal to them, that they can be the same when you say we have specific zones? We say no. Secondly, do you harm those ability of those women who live outside these regions to gain the support they need when the women they need to call out sexism, call out oppression, have left? We say no as well. And for those reasons and the others we've given you, we couldn't be prouder to oppose.